Dear students, today we're finding ourselves at a tipping point. The amount of global greenhouse gas uh, emissions are about to reach the maximum level that is compatible with human life as uh, we know it today. You grew up uh, in a world that was quite different from the one your parents grew up in, uh, and your children will grow up in a world that is different from the one we live in today. Your parents had never heard about the internet, while you probably uh, can't imagine a life without access to the web, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. So we can't predict the future, but we can do our best to shape it. As human beings of the 21st century, we have a lot of knowledge about the impact of fossil fuel on climate change. We're all aware of the grave consequences that will await us if we fail to act. It's climate change stupid was the headline of Bloomberg Business Week uh, in November with a photo of uh, uh, a flooded street caused by the hurricane Sandy. Floods, droughts, hurricanes, sea level rise will hit the poorest and most vulnerable uh, particularly hard and is doing so already even though they've done the least to create this problem. Halting climate change and achieving a green transition is the greatest challenge of our times, and it's doable. I'm convinced that this transition, even though it might appear costly today, will also hold important potential of improvement uh, to our lives as citizens, such as providing better public transport, cleaner air, less pollution, improved economy, more efficient use of resources, and eventually a safer future. Maybe your children will shake their heads when, they're, when you tell them about the cities of your childhood with pollution and noise from cars in traffic jams. I'm very glad to have the chance to speak to you here today. Uh, you are the young and promising students here at uh, NTNU. And as Johan mentioned, I've also been a student, not uh, very promising, but at least I was young, uh, back in the last century. But uh, at Technoport, you have chosen to uh, apply your talents to solve challenges related to sustainability and green energy. You're cooperating with others with different backgrounds, as we just uh, heard uh, on the film from last year's Technoport. And you're setting just the right example for how the green transition must be achieved. Okay, let me say a few words about uh, the global picture. 81% of uh, the emissions we can allow ourselves in the future are already locked into existing power plants, industry and transport infrastructure. If we do not act quickly to reduce CO2 emissions, all allowable emissions will be locked in by existing energy infrastructure by 2007. The International Energy Agency warns us that emissions must peak in 2020, the latest, and must be at least cut by half by 2050 in order to preserve a 80% chance of reaching the two degree target. That's the target of limiting temperature rise to a maximum of two degrees. Fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas accounts for 60% approximately of global emissions. So this means that the world's energy mix needs to change drastically. Fossil fuels need to de decrease from about two-thirds of total energy use today to about uh, one-fourth in 2050. And the share of renewables need to expand strongly. It's encouraging that installed solar energy in the world has increased by 14 times 
the last seven years. And China alone is expected to increase its solar capacity by another 20 times within 2035. These are big numbers, but still not big enough. If the current global energy trends continues, renewables will only account for 14% of the world energy supply in 2050. This is because fossil resources are so large and so accessible that they will continue to be used for the foreseeable futures. So beside cutting the use of fossil fuels, something which in itself would drive the demand for renew renewables, the use of fossil fuels must also change. We need to halve the use of coal. Uh, we need to uh, decrease significantly the use of oil, uh, while the use of gas might increase slightly. Another important factor is energy efficiency. Yeah, uh, the International Energy Agency uh, reasons that energy use may grow until 2050, but this does not mean that wealthy countries like Norway may use more energy. Growth in energy use must be reserved for those countries that uh, has a strong need to develop. Finally, we need to expand the use of technology to capture and store carbon. If the world is to achieve the two degrees goal, no more than one third of the proven uh, reserves of fossil fuels can be consumed prior to 2050. Unless carbon capture and storage uh, technology is widely deployed. And I know that this is something you're doing very good. Uh, excellent, actually, research here uh, in Trondheim. Um, in short, we need to both force the domestic transition towards a low carbon economy and at the same time deliver significant contributions globally through development and demonstration of clean technologies. So what are we doing to power the green transition at home here in Norway. Last year, six out of seven political parties uh, in the parliament agreed that uh, Norway should be carbon neutral in 2050, the latest, and that two thirds of our emission cuts towards 2020 uh, should be done at home. Our climate policy has already yielded good results. In the last 20 years, emissions per produced unit in Norway uh, has fallen by 36%. Furthermore, Norway is in a unique position as a large energy producer of both fossil and renewable energy. We have the experience, we have knowledge, we have resources that must be used to develop more renewable energy, both in Norway and in the rest of the world. So this is a good start, but not sufficient. Our, climate, uh, our policy on climate change should be among the most ambitious in the world. So how will we do this? Let me emphasize just a few points. Putting a price on carbon, not just at home, but worldwide, uh, remains one of the most promising ways to uh, achieve a shift from fossil fuels to renewables. One of the main explanations for uh, the mitigation efforts that's done in Norway so far is that we introduced a carbon tax in 1991. That is why we have recently decided to increase the carbon tax on the petroleum sector further. In 2007, the vehicle pur purchase tax system were changed to reward vehicles with low CO2 emission and to penalize vehicles with high emissions. In 2006, the average emissions from new cars in Norway were 177 grams per kilometer. And that was above the average in Europe. In 2011, the average in Europe had fallen to 136 gram, while it was 134 gram in Norway and it continued to drop to a further to 130 grams uh, last year. 
So Norway is now one of the biggest markets in the world for electric vehicles because of this tax system and other incentives. And we believe we're witnessing uh, the beginning of a revolution. In October last year, uh, electric cars uh, represented 5% of the total amount of sold cars in Norway, uh, and an additional 6% were hybrids. So our next goal now is to reach an average of 85 grams per kilometer in 2020. And that is, that constitute emission reductions of just above 50% in less than 15 years. For the green transition to play out, we also need to uh, remove some damaging brakes. Today, the subsidies for fossil fuels are six times higher than the uh, subsidies uh, for renewables worldwide. The playing field puts renewables at a massive disadvantage when it should be the other way around. This is all the more wrong when we consider that these subsidies do not help the poor. Only 7% of the subsidies benefit the poorest one-fifth, while 43% ends up in the pocket or pockets of the uh, richest one-fifth. In Norway, we're also facing critical choices of how to steer public investment to the petroleum industry or to green assets at home or abroad, like wind or solar power. We know that the two degree targets require the majority of the world's fossil resources to stay on the ground, and this applies to us as well, and especially to areas where resources are difficult to access and carry risks of major environmental damage. Fortunately, we are seeing more and more Norwegian companies are supplying the uh, European offshore wind industry and that energy actors such as Statoil and Statkraft uh, invest in offshore wind. And this is an example of a forward-looking trend that needs to continue. Development of new technological solutions is another key element to succeeding. Uh, to reduce the global greenhouse gas emissions in the next few decades. This is why the expertise you uh, bring forward will be so important. And this is why uh, we have created a new technology fund for climate mitigation uh, measures, renewable energy and energy conversion. The new fund will be increased with 5 billion uh, this year uh, bringing the total capital to 30 billion Norwegian kroners. Uh, and within 2020, the government will gradually incre increase the fund's capital up to 50 uh, billion Norwegian kroners. Finally, and importantly, achieving a green transition requires strict and clear rules at the international level. The climate summit in Doha uh, last uh, December was a step in the right direction on the way to a new global uh, binding climate agreement. The agreement, which should be uh, concluded in 2015 and enter into force in 2020, uh, needs to provide a framework within which uh, all major emitters, are they developed or developing countries, take their share of the re responsibility. Norway enjoys uh, trust and credibility in this process, and we will seek a leading role in the, works in the work towards a new agreement. Along with my parents, I grew up under the threat of a nuclear war between Soviet Union and the US, while you uh, grew up under the threat of accelerated global warming. As it turns out, there was no nuclear war, uh, the Iron Curtain, is history, and so is the Soviet Union. Enemies are now allied. This shows that everything is possible in the history of mankind. And if someone had told us in the early 80s that uh, the Berlin Wall would have been gone within less than uh, 10 years, we would certainly not have believed it. 
So climate change is caused by humans and can also be solved by human beings. We can't predict the future, but we can contribute to shaping it. And you, as young students, represent the future and the possible solutions to this biggest challenge of our time. So keep up the good work. Thank you.